Hey, dude, Michael Myers is locked up around here, right? Yeah, rumor has it he actually escaped last night. Really? Gosh, I feel like that's him right there in that car. I highly doubt that, man. Look, there he is over there. There's nothing to be afraid of, dude. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm a little creeped out. Huh? Oh! <laughs> oh, 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 oh. What's up, YouTube friends? My name is Danny Jones, and welcome to Jones Vibes. First and foremost, thank you so much for clicking on this video, and if you enjoy it, please go ahead and hit that knife button, I mean like button, and then click subscribe and hit the notification bell. That'll keep you up to date when I make more content. And as all of you know, we are in the month of October. It is slasher season, ladies and gentlemen, and we have a brand new installment in the Halloween franchise, Halloween Kills. It takes place directly after the events of the reboot in 2018. And I gotta say, I've been really looking forward to this movie. As far as horror franchises go, this is one of my favorites. I mean, Ghostface and Scream is kind of in a whole different league for myself. I just love the Scream movies. And side note, the Scream 5 trailer played in the theater and listening to the people that hadn't seen it behind us like, oh my gosh, there's a new Scream. That just made a fan happy. But yeah, I saw this movie, Friday night of opening weekend, packed theater, a lot of great energy, Alamo Draft House was up and running, doing its thing, and the wife and I just had a lot of fun. And with that being said, this is a spoiler review. I don't want your vibes to be way off and spoil the first time you go to it just because you watched this video. So if you haven't seen Halloween Kills, stop right now. And if you did see it, like me, let's go. Now I'm probably gonna break this thing down pretty quickly because there's not that much that happens in the movie. And then I'm just gonna talk about some of the likes and dislikes that I had with it. I mean, really, when it comes to judging a Halloween movie, you just want Michael Myers to stalk some people and do some crazy stuff. Yeah, baby! <laughs> yeah. Oh! And he certainly does some crazy things in this movie. Like really gory and crazy things. Like I said, this movie takes place directly after the events of the 2018 Halloween reboot. We got Laurie Strode, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, Iconic character, so happy to see her. And they're riding in the back of the truck. She's with her daughter, Karen, and she's played by Judy Greer, who is the most famous actress whose name that you never knew. Let's just go down the list. 27 dresses, 13 going on 30, Ant-Man, Jurassic World. Take a look at her IMDb page. She's been in like everything. And they're with kind of the newcomer from the first movie, Allison, who is Karen's daughter. And so you got three powerful women in this truck. They're riding away from the scene. They just killed Michael. Fire trucks start passing by. And, you know, you can't blame the guys. They're just doing their job. But that's kind of a little sign that Michael may not actually be dead, which he never is. But this movie starts out pretty lit. The firefighters get to Laurie Strode's house, and one of them falls through the floor. And there is Michael. Michael! And I have to say, my anticipation for this movie was pretty much based around this scene. I was like, what is gonna happen with him and these firefighters? And it's just one of the most gruesome, like, attacks by Michael. There's a part with, like, a saw that he's, like, digging into this guy. This guy's like, oh! And my goodness, just sitting there watching this is just, you're just tense. And there's something to be said about that in all of the Halloween films. They're just tense. A lot of times, these scenes will just go on for minutes and minutes and minutes and you're like, oh, what is gonna happen? But long story short, Michael is alive. And I do partially blame a lot of this on Laurie Strode because in the first movie of this franchise, she's like, I'm all set up. He's gonna come here, I'm gonna kill him. And she kind of just gets owned and her plan really isn't that great. You'd think after 40 years, she's sitting around and she has like a risk board out and she has it all mapped out and planned out. But she's like underneath in the basement and he's walking around the house and she shoots up through the floorboard and gives away their position. And I don't know, as a fan, it's just frustrating. It's like, Lori, you gotta be better. But basically she goes to the hospital and she has like a full on surgery, repairs the stab wound that she had. And pretty early on, the daughters find out that Michael is still alive. So they're kind of keeping that secret from Lori. But on the other side of the movie, you're kind of introduced to all of these characters that you've known if you watch the original movie, but Something that they tried to do in this film was take all of these characters that we know 
from the original film and show them 40 years later. And some of the plot was a little corny, but a lot of these actors are acting their heart out. Like, first up, we have Anthony Michael Hall, who plays Tommy Doyle. Where my Breakfast Club fans at, though? And throughout this movie, this guy is just given 110. He says the line, evil dies tonight, like, a trillion times. It definitely gets to the point where it's like, okay, evil dies tonight. Like, we, we got it. Cool. And then you have Kyle Richards, and she plays Lindsay, the little girl whose babysitter died in the original. You have Robert Longstreet, who plays Lonnie, who was kind of a bully in the original. But then they have some flashbacks in this film, and he's actually the one kind of being bullied and stuff. Quick shout out to this guy. He was in the recent Midnight Mass show on Netflix. And if you want to see his acting chops, go watch that show. Regardless, go watch that show. It's incredible. But the main focal point of this movie is you have all of these characters and they're like, you know what? Michael's back. We're not going to let him get our town. And spoiler alert, it doesn't work. But yeah, a lot of the acting in this movie is extremely emotional. And if you were there just to watch Michael kill people, you kind of get sucked out of that a little bit. There's this whole middle chunk in the movie where the other patient that escaped with Michael in the uh, the first one. He's spotted outside of a hospital that Lori's at, and so they all start chasing him. They think that he's Michael Myers. And this is definitely that section of the movie that I feel like people are gonna criticize a lot. But I did look into it a little bit, and the writers as well as the director, they're basically saying when people act out of fear, they do irrational things. But yeah, that guy ends up like jumping out of a window and killing himself because this big mob is chasing him and harassing him because they think he's Michael. And you know, I get what they were trying to do, whether it was executed well enough for me, not sure. But I don't think it takes away enough to make this a bad movie. Like the kills by Michael Myers are just brutal in this film. Starting with this old couple and they're sitting in their home, they're neighbors to Lori Strode, so obviously they're in the direct path of evil here. <laughs> and then after she's stabbed and he kills the husband, he like displays the husband's body and he keeps just grabbing knives, which makes it pretty apparent that he just loves killing and he's like designing this whole little piece of art or something. But yeah, after all the original characters kind of meet up and they all decide that they're all gonna go hunt down Michael, you have this killing scene in the park, which features Marion, played by Nancy Stevens, who was in the original. She escaped death from Michael in that one, and she totally doesn't in this one. You have this sweet couple that was dressed up as a doctor and a nurse, and I really liked their characters, and I really didn't want to see him die, but they do in some terrible ways. And then he places all of them on a merry-go-round and Lindsay gets away. So you have a feeling in Halloween Ends, she's probably gonna be doing something because she's still alive at the end of this movie. But someone we haven't talked about is Officer Hawkins who gets stabbed in the neck by the doctor in the first movie. But it turns out he lived and they show you all these flashbacks from his past where like he had a chance to kill Michael, but he accidentally shot his partner. And to be honest, there's like a lot of this story. And once again, you have a feeling that hopefully this pays off in the third one because if it doesn't pay off, I'm just gonna feel like they wasted a lot of time of this movie with this flashback and young officer Hawkins Apparently him and Laurie Strode had a thing back in the day. So maybe we'll see that fleshed out I certainly hope it does but he doesn't actually do really anything in this movie He's just sitting in the hospital the whole time with Laurie But no doubt my favorite part of this movie is Big John and Little John Big John is played by Scott MacArthur and Little John is played by Michael McDonald <laughs> And they're awesome. They're just sitting around, they're celebrating Halloween, they're having a great night. These kids keep kind of harassing them. And so when Michael shows up, they just think it's kids again. And unfortunately, it's not. It's Michael, and he's here to kill you. But it really turns out that Michael's heading there. Like, he's just trying to get back to his home. He's trying to get to his house. Lori, the whole time, is kind of making it about her. She's like, Michael's after me. It's all, you know, it's all about me. And it kind of takes Officer Hawkins, as well as her daughters, telling her, like, no, it's not about you. In the first one, the doctor took him to your house. You're not at the center of this. But Allison and somebody that I haven't actually mentioned yet, Cameron from the first movie, who you really don't like in that film. He cheats on Allison, so you're like, come on, man. And you're kind of thinking there's gonna be a scene where Michael kills him, but that never happens. This second film just picks up right with him. And so you're like, oh, cool. And throughout the movie, I kind of grew to like him. But yeah, him and Allison and then his dad, who is Lonnie, they all show up at Michael's house and Lonnie decides to go in there, obviously all brave, like, you know, son, I got to go do what I got to do. You hear one shot in the distance and then you see his mangled body later. So you're like, well, that didn't work out, bro. <laughs> and then Cameron sees his dad's dead body 
and Michael jumps out and gets Cameron. And little did I know that he was about to die the most awful, terrifying, worst death that I've, like, ever seen in a movie. Allison has to watch the entire time, and Michael is just, like, playing with this kid, and he eventually breaks his neck, and I was actually kind of sad. But then Michael goes down the stairs, and he's about to confront Allison, and then Karen shows up with the pitchfork that was referenced earlier in the movie, and she stabs him in the back, and boom, got him. Like, Allison stabbed him, pitchfork in the back, Michael's dead. Why does everybody always think Michael's dead? And so obviously he stands up, but Karen knew this. She has this whole plan. She marches Michael right into the belly of the beast, kind of lays a trap for him. And all the people in the town for the millionth time are like, evil dies tonight. We're going to get you, Michael. And they do kind of own Michael. I mean, this was a really cool scene. Michael picks his mask up off the ground, he puts it on, and you're like, oh my gosh, he's just gonna fight this entire town. And it ends up being a little anticlimactic because they do just own him. Like, they shoot him, they stab him, and he ends up on the ground, and everybody thinks he's dead again. But it does make for a very satisfying next scene, because then he gets up and he just starts killing everybody. Like, Tommy Doyle is dead. Evil did not die tonight. And so Karen and Allison are back at the house and there's like a bunch of cops around and Karen's looking at the upstairs bedroom window like, I think I want to go up there. And they actually kill Judy Greer's character off. And I guess they didn't show her like completely dead so maybe they'll bring her back. But I think it's a pretty bold move to just kill her off. Like I think that's that's pretty cool. And then you have this ending kind of back and forth like looking out different windows of Lori and Michael and then Lori and Michael. And it does a good job of making you excited for Halloween ends. Like whatever you thought about this movie as you were watching it, everything kind of floods right back in at the end because you're like, ooh, man, I got to see what, what happens next. And truth be told, I was satisfied. Like I liked this movie. I had a great time. Is it my favorite in the series of Halloween movies? No, but I think the amount of kills as well as how gruesome things were, that was the craziest that I've ever seen Michael Myers. I think aesthetically, he looked amazing. The mask was on point. And in most of the shots, you don't see his eyes. That's one thing that's bothered me in the past about different iterations of the mask is a lot of times you see a little bit too much skin. Kind of looks like when I wear it. But in this, it's just like you're gazing into two black holes. You're gazing into death. But even though I don't hate things, there are things that I dislike about this movie. I think the dialogue wasn't that great. There was the whole middle scene that even though there might have been a message behind it, I just don't think it was necessary. It definitely didn't need to be as long as it was. And then all of the Officer Hawkins stuff, like I said, if that doesn't pay off in Halloween Ends, I'm gonna be like, man, you could have added a couple extra kills in there. And I kind of already mentioned all the things that I liked. I think Michael Myers looked great. Lori was great as always. I think the kills in this movie were more brutal than we've ever seen. And I want them to keep that up. And it did a well enough job at making me excited for the third movie. But yeah, that's Halloween Kills. Please let me know what you thought in the comments. Because I really do think out of all the Halloween films, this one has a lot to dissect. And I think people are going to be a little divided over it. And now I want to take a second and just talk about this franchise. I think Blumhouse really has done such a good job at rebooting this franchise. But upon really revisiting all the movies, I am a little disappointed that some of the stuff isn't canon. Like, I think the original Halloween 2 is awesome, and it takes place on the same night as Halloween 1. And so I don't know why that's not factored in and how they had to remove that from the story. Like, I think Laurie and Michael Myers being brother and sister is pretty awesome. And also, people are probably going to dog on me for this, but Halloween H2O and Resurrection are not that bad. And you're telling me Josh Hartnett's not her son anymore? I mean, he was like the king of the 90s. We can't just forget about him. Did you ever see the faculty? I mean, look at this guy. And then Halloween Resurrection has Busta Rhymes and Tyra Banks. Trick or treat. I know those films were a little on the cheesy side and... Maybe major John Carpenter Halloween fans just didn't like it, but I really do think they could have incorporated like Josh Hartnett as her son still and just said that she had Karen in another marriage. And so, yeah, it's a little difficult for me after watching all the Halloween movies and then watching these ones to like wrap my head around what is canon and what's not. But I do appreciate what they're trying to do. And in Halloween Kills, bringing all the characters back from the original, even showing Dr. Loomis at points. And no matter what, you're getting Michael Myers and he's stalking people, he's not dying, and he's just back to his roots. He's terrorizing the town of Haddonfield. And we love it, don't we? And that about wraps it up. 
If you're a Halloween fan, please go ahead and like this video. And if you enjoyed it, please go ahead and click subscribe and that notification bell. I have a lot of content on the way, so keep checking back. But as always, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you next time. Oh, oh, oh.